Hi everyone, so today we're going to be taking a look at what's going on under the hood in an AVR at Mega 328 processor uh, on our way towards writing uh, standalone uh, functions in Assembler, but by calling them from C. So we're going to do that, all right? So we're going to start off by looking at what is the behavior of a function that is being called from the main function in C. All right, so here we go. I've got a, a function or a, a project already defined. It has the xt.h, it has the standard integer.h as well included. There's this ASM function, don't worry about it for right now. What's more important is, and what we're going to be talking about today, is this function, my C function, which has an output of 8 bits, declared as volatile. I have one input, two input, and three inputs that are all 8 bits going into this function. They're all declared as volatile in order to make sure that the compiler doesn't try to outsmart me. All right, it's easy to do. I'm trying to force it to make sure that it doesn't do that because it will try really, really hard to outsmart me. All right, and if it outsmarts me, it will optimize out things that I intended to show uh, in the disassembled view of, of the C functions um, that we're looking at. All right, so then we have the main function. It has no input parameters. It has this trivial output parameter of an integer. Uh, don't worry about that. Next, we have uh, my variable set to one. It's an 8-bit integer and it's been declared as volatile for the same reasons I just talked about. We want to make sure that the compiler doesn't outsmart me. Next, um, we have another one right here. Oh, and it's set to a value of one. We have another variable uh, that is also 8 bits and it's set to a value of 15 in base 10 or F in hexadecimal. All right. Next, I do some trivial math on it. Again, the idea is to outsmart the compiler so that it doesn't um, optimize out stuff that I want to be able to actually see in here. After that, call a simple C function and return some uh, math operation that I'll be doing inside of it. All right. Now, I have a prototype of that function up here. I call it inside of my main function and I define it down below. Let's take a look at it defined down below. Again, it's declared to have a, an output that is volatile, that is 8 bits. That's the name of the function right there. And then there are three input 1, input 2, input 3 input parameters. Inside, I have an output uh, variable that I call output value, and I've declared it as volatile as well to make sure the compiler doesn't optimize it out or erase it, basically. I set it initially to a value of 0 but I will be using it to return the, the result of my math operation. Where's the math operation? It's right here. This is actually the key part right here. Output value, which is what's going to be returned here, or there, depending on how you want to look at it, is equal to the first input, the second input, the third input, and I'm adding three to it. Now, the first input in my main function is going to have a value of one, the next one will have a value of two, the next one will have a value of three, and then I add three to it, so that gives you a value of nine. Okay, nine will be output out of here. I threw this in here, again, just to make the function look more complicated than it has to be, um, so the compiler doesn't optimize stuff out. What I'm saying here is that if the value ever goes above 20, or if it go, goes below zero, threshold those values so that it, it never goes above 20 and never goes below zero. It's actually kind of a, a, a good thing to do in a lot of cases in, in programs where you threshold your values so it doesn't go beyond certain boundaries. Anyway, so that is it. Let's now simulate it for the Atmega 328. We're compiling and then sending it into the simulator. The simulator is initializing. It's now hit my first breakpoint. So I'm about to um, call up that C function. You'll notice, hopefully, but I'll point it out anyway, uh, my output variable is right here. If I look in the watch window, my output variable has an address of 100. It has a value of 15, which is F in hexadecimal. And the other variable is called my variable. It has a size of 8 bits. It's located at address 101. It has a value of 4. If I go into my memory view, so we can take a look at memory views in different ways. In this case, SRAM data memory. You can see that as I went through the first couple of lines of code, as it went down to the breakpoint, it updated at address 100, 
a value of f. Where did that f come from? Come from? It came from right there, the output variable. It is located in memory right there, and right beside it is another eight bits. That is my variable has a value of four, just like you see right here in the watch window. So we're putting stuff into memory. Here is the outline of what memory has, the contents of it, in fact. And if and now that we're all the way down to the bottom, you'll see that there's an address here, 8F0. This contains the value of the stack, or it has the values in the stack, which will change, and you'll see this later on. All right, let's step into, we're now moving inside of the function, my C function, so we jumped from main into that function that I wrote in C. And as things are moving through here, you can see that the last line of the SRAM data memory window has changed. You'll notice that the values one, two, and three are in there. Those three values aren't there by accident. They're there because the values that are being passed in as parameters into the function are being transferred in. And the stack is being used as part of that process. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going. So now I'm going to be updating my uh, value of the output value right there. There we go, output value right there. It starts off as zero. It should update to a value of nine. Yep, there we go. It has a value of nine. And you'll notice that its value is found right there as well. Um, I'm in the, uh, inside the, near the stack actually, or in the stack. We'll have to ask ourselves why that's the case later. Now MPLabX has frozen on me. All right, let's continue. Skip, skip, skip. We're gonna return our output value and we're gonna head back into the main function. So we're now in the main function, we're in this while loop, etc. So we're gonna to have to do a disassembly of the code. We'll do that next. Mm -hmm.